Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radicad, and in this video, I'm going to talk about one of the most important architecture um, aspects of a Power BI solution, which is adding a layer of data flow between data source and a Power BI dataset. Let's see what it is, how it can help, and what are the benefits. In many Power BI implementation, we have data uh, directly imported from the data source uh, into the Power BI dataset. However, that implementation can be improved with adding a layer of uh, data flow. Uh, this is the type of architecture that I'm talking about in this uh, video. If you are not familiar with data flow, I recommend you watching other videos that I have about data flows and blog posts, uh, which you can find them, uh, link to them under uh, the description of this video. Under uh, description, you'll find a link to my blog post, which have links to all my uh, data flow articles. Uh, data flow is a way that you can do transformation in the cloud and uh, store it in a data flow storage, which behind the scene is using Azure Data Lake storage or CDS command data services if you are using uh, data flows in um, Power Platform, not just Power BI. Uh, what I'm talking about is instead of getting data directly from the data source in the Power BI dataset, we get it from a data flow storage. Basically, this data flow storage is getting data from data source. This data source can be SQL Server database, it can be Excel files in a SharePoint folder, it can be basically anything. Uh, this uh, data flow layer can be uh, just loading data as it is like let's say partial data or it can be even doing some transformation filtering data aggregating data uh, and then power bi data sets get data from that and power bi reports connected to the power bi data set there are many benefits in architecture like this what are benefits uh, let's talk about them for example one by one i'm talking about few of those here the first one is that when you have a number of power bi data sets uh, getting data from the data source uh, or even Power BI desktop uh, like report developers getting data from the data source uh, they all reading from the data source now if this data source is like an operational system uh, and if you are reading a lot of data from that source every time that a data set refresh from Power BI data uh, Power BI service or every time that a developer trying to get the most up-to-date data to reconcile some of the information in the Power BI desktop, with every of those refreshes, your operational system users will be impacted. Let's say this is a CRM database. They are using it like at their daytime activities. Sometimes it's at peak time. And if suddenly a data set refresh uh, cause a performance drop, uh, this is something that you don't really want to happen. Having a number of uh, a lot of reads from the source system is not always ideal. Having a layer of data flow in between, even if it is like the same data just loaded here uh, as another database layer in between helps because you just read data from that data source once. This is normally scheduled, let's say once a day, eight times a day, or even more than that. But it is much more limited the number of reads from this source compared to the reads that you have in multiple Power BI datasets. And your Power BI datasets are now refreshing from the data flow storage. This means that your operational system users won't be impacted by this. Another benefit is that if you have a data source system with many tables, normally if we are talking about database tables, we are we have like many tables, many uh, like a transactional tables. Sometimes you have databases with over a thousand, a thousand of tables, right? And if you want to give access to the users to system like that, you need to go through a lot of processes because giving, getting access to a system with that much data requires a lot of uh, scenarios to go through, a lot of processes, signs of to go through. Often you go through a process of getting access to part of that data, but all of that requires a lot of steps and considerations. 
uh, versus if you have data flows in between and that data flow might have like normally subset of data based on what is required actually uh, having access on that data flow would be much easier because for example this might be only let's say the sales data or the marketing data uh, stored in this data flow and giving access to people in the sales department or marketing department to that data might be easier than giving them access to everything which might include HR and some other information. Uh, another thing about separating these layers is that sometimes you have like huge tables in a data source. That is one of the big concerns of DBAs that they say, for example, I have a table with 2 billion rows in a data source, in a database. How can I be sure that if I give access to this, my database, my Power BI users don't go and import all of that data? That would cause uh, the drop in the performance of a database, the drop uh, in, let's say, performance of a server, and many other uh, problems. Uh, Dataflow can help it in this way that instead of bringing all of that data, which is probably not required for a lot of reports, you can have like some transformations applied. You get the filtered or aggregated data based on what it is required. For example, if the last three years of data is required for analysis, just populate that much and data flow supports the query folding from a lot of data sources so that would help a lot in uh, in the refresh and get data from the data source itself and power bi data sets just read data from that that would also help again in a scenario like that uh, gateway is another uh, interesting things, especially if your data source is on-premises. If your data source is on-premises, every Power BI dataset that is getting data from it requires a refresh through the gateway. Refresh through the gateway will, of course, have an, an extra component to go through, uh, which can be reduced with having a data flow. Because if you have a data flow, the gateway is still needed for your data flow to refresh. But your Power BI datasets don't need uh, the gateway to refresh the data because they are getting their data from a data flow storage. Uh, same kind of scenario on the other way around applies on the Power BI desktop. Your Power BI desktop users, if they want to get the most up-to-date data, they need to be connected to the on-premises uh, data source. So they need to be uh, connected to the on-premises network through a VPN or a connection to the on-premises network because the data source is on-premises versus if uh, if it is already loaded into the data flow then they can connect to it with any internet connection as long as they have access to that data flow. Another thing which is quite often happening and quite important is that the data source changes a lot. Let's say you have a lot of tables. Uh, these tables, their structure might change. Sometimes you might decide to change the whole database system from SQL Server to Oracle based on some transitions. You change it from one version of database to another version. These changes, if you apply these changes on a database that you have, let's say, 15, 20 Power BI datasets getting data directly from that would impact all of those datasets. Uh, that means that as a result, then you should go to every Power BI dataset uh, and change the code, part of the, part of the code that gets data and do does some data transformation. Versus if you have a data flow in between, that adds a layer of abstraction here. Then your datasets refresh would just be normally fine because they are getting data from data flow. It's only the refresh of data flow that needs to be changed. So you'll have much less maintenance work to do, only updating the metadata and part of the code in your data flows. So there are many other benefits. I'm just focusing on a few of these here. Uh, one of the questions that I often get from users is that, well, what if I use SQL Server database or data warehouse as a storage and use SSIS or Azure Data Factory instead of data flows? This is a question that I often get from database professionals. Um, is that also the same or uh, should I use Dataflow? My answer is that uh, instead of focusing on technology first, you should focus on the architecture and concept first. Uh, 
The concept and the architecture that I am explaining in this video is having a layer of uh, data source, uh, like an extra layer between data source and data, data set. That is the concept, that is the architecture. When you have the concept and architecture, then you can implement it with the, with the tool that you choose. For many Power BI users, for many Power BI developers, because they don't have database background, they don't know about the SSIS, they don't know about Azure Data Factory, or uh, they don't have the budget to pay for extra licenses and things like that, they do that all in Dataflow, which is absolutely fine. You might be quite good at using uh, Azure Data Factory, SSIS, you have the skill set to do that, and you have the licenses, the infrastructure to use it. That is absolutely fine too. You can use that approach. It's not about the technology, it's about uh, the approach and the architecture to choose. I hope you like this video. If you are interested in more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos about Power BI in our channel.